Alrighty, here we are on lesson 20, writing and evaluating expressions using multiplication and division. So again, just like lesson 19, we're going to be using our tables to look for patterns and then write expressions. The only difference is now we're writing expressions that use multiplication and division. So those are the types of patterns we're looking for. So if we look at the first exercise, it says the farmer's market is selling bags of apples. In every bag, there are three apples, so it says complete the table. So in one bag, there would be three apples, so that means in two bags, there would be six apples, then nine, and then twelve. And we're going to leave the last row blank for now, because it just says B. So we're going to look for our patterns, and when we go across here, we see that we are multiplying by three every time. So that's our pattern. So that means down here, if we were going to write an expression to get from b over to the number of apples, we would be multiplying by 3, so we would have 3b. Right? And then we're going to add one row in here at the bottom. If we used a for apples, and think about if we wanted to go the other way, if we were multiplying, if we were going the other way, I'll do it here in orange, to get from 9 to 3, we would be dividing by 3. So that means our expression would be a over 3. Alright, so we're going to use those to answer some questions. It says, what if the market had 25 bags of apples to sell? How many apples is that in all? So if we had 25 bags, there's 3 in each bag, so we multiply by 3. That means that we would have 75 apples in all. C says, if a truck arrived that had some number A more apples on it, then how many bags would the clerks use to bag up the apples? So if we had A apples, and there's three in each bag, that means we'd have to divide them by three, which is that expression that we wrote in the table already. D says, if a truck arrived that had 600 more apples on it, how many bags would the clerks use? So if we have 600 apples, three per bag, so that means we divide by three, this means they would need 200 bags. And then E says, how is part D different from part B? Well, in part B, we multiplied. In part D, we divided. Because we were asking for different things. Alright, so go ahead and flip on over to the next page. Number two here, it says, In New York State, there is a five-cent deposit on all carbonated beverage cans and bottles. When you return the empty can or bottle, you get the five cents back. So, five cents, remember, if we're going to write that as a decimal, that would be 0 0.05, not 0 0.5, that's 50 cents. So, for one can, our refund would be 0 0.05, five cents. For two cans, it would be 10 cents, which would be 0 0.10. Three would be 0.15. You can see we're just adding 0 0.05 going down, so 0 0.20. Um, but then we have to stop here because we have 10 cans down. So let's look at our patterns to help us figure out so we don't have to count all the way up to 10. So when we go across, we can see here we are multiplying by 0 0.05 every time. Okay, so that's our pattern. So, to get from 10 over to how many uh, dollars we would get in refund, we're going to do 10 times 0 0.05, so 10 times 0 0.05, which gives us 50 cents. This is 50 cents. Here we have 50, so we're going to do 50 times 0 0.05, which is $2.50. Now we have 100 times 0 0.05, which is $5. And now we need to write our expression. So we're multiplying to get over to our refund. So this means here we'd have 0 0.05c. And again, I want to add in that bottom row. If we had D dollars and we're trying to figure out how many cans we recycled, we would do the opposite and we would have D over 0.05. 
So B says, if we let C represent the number of cans, what is the expression that shows how much money is returned? And we already wrote that. So to show how much money is returned, our expression would be 0 0.05. Oh, Try that again. 0.05C. C says to use the expression to find out how much money Brett would receive if he returned 222 cans. So this is our C. So we're going to have 0 0.05 times 222. And when you do that in the calculator, you get 11.1. .1, but remember, this is money. So this would be $11.10. You have to add on that zero at the end. D says, if I can scroll down here, oops. D says, if Gavin needs to earn $4.50 for returning cans, how many cans does he need to collect and return? So we're going to use our other expression, our D over 0 0.05. We know how much money he wants, which is $4.50, divided by 0 0.05. So when we do that in the calculator, you get 90. So I'd have to collect 90 cans. All right. So on the next page, there is one more example. It says the fare for a subway or local bus ride is two fifty. So that means for one ride, it would cost two dollars and fifty cents. For two rides, it would cost five dollars. Right? I'm going to stop there though, and I want you to finish this on your own. So fill in this table and then answer, come back, you're going to answer these three questions. You're going to answer B, C, and D. You do not have to do part E. Okay, so cross off part E, but I do want you to try this on your own. Please fill it in, even if you're not sure if it's right, and then we will go over it in class tomorrow.